Yesterday I was lucky enough to get a hold of Dr. Stephen Lane's Cervelo R5 road bike fitted with the Shimano power meter for a few hours to do the Llama lab test on and take outside and collect some data. Slane did mention to me that the left right power balance just didn't seem quite right. He's quite an experienced cyclist so I took his word for it but again I went out there and collected all the data myself independently and uh, yeah the results were quite interesting. So I thought what I'll do, I'd run through the specs of the unit because I wanted to get to know the unit inside out and then we'll have a look at the data from the Llama lab test and the outside ride. Finding the technical specifications of this unit was quite a task in itself. The Shimano website's all very marketing based, but thanks to Ray from DC Raymaker and a few other reviewers, I've collated what you need to know about this power meter to get across all the specs. So first up, it's a Shimano Durace 9100 crank, so it's integrated into that, adding only 70 grams to the crank set itself. The weight is sub 700 grams, I guess plus or minus a few depending on which crank length and ring sets you go with. So quite a light crank set with the power meter included there. Accuracy wise, plus or minus 2%, active temperature compensation included, rechargeable battery of up to 300 hours use, uh, one single battery as well. Some dual sided power meters have two batteries, this is just one single battery to charge, happy days with that. Bluetooth and AMP plus support. But here's my first beef of this unit. A lot of the marketing and a lot of the sites that are selling this unit claim that it is Bluetooth and AMP Plus compatible. Hold it right there. It's AMP Plus only for data. Bluetooth is only the management of the system. You cannot use this with Zwift iOS, Zwift Apple TV, or any other unit that connects, trainer road, suffer fest, whatever you want to connect to via Bluetooth for this power meter. It does not happen. Bluetooth is only for unit management. Not quite what we expect for a 2017 slash 2018 power meter. One thing that does impress me though about the Bluetooth management of this device is the ability to set a pass key. So this keeps unwanted malicious reconfigurers out of your system and only you can get to it. Not much of an issue, but I've got to be honest, I am quite uneasy about the current state of sports tech and the openness of that. You can go to any sporting event, open up your phone and just scan for devices, connect to them, download data from them. It's very open. So Shimano, kudos for offering security in this device. Another unique feature that did impress me of this unit was a button on the power meter itself or the crank set that did a zero offset or calibration, Garmin call it. So this means if a mechanic was to have your bike or somebody else was to have your bike and be preparing it, rather than them having to go through your head unit and find where that calibration zero offset menu is, they can press a button on the crank set, hand you your bike and away you go. That is super cool. So there's the important specifications of the unit. There's not much more to it other than knowing it's just a Shimano crank. You select your length, your ring type and away you go. Price wise, you're looking at around $1,700 to $2,000 Australian, £1,499 and $1,550 US dollars. So it's in the premium price range, but remembering you do get the pretty nice looking crank set with that. Rightio, no time for standard B-roll footage of me riding the bike here. Let's jump straight into it, the Llama Lab Test. What we have set up here is the Tax Neo with the Shimano Power on screen there. We also had the Favero Asioma Duo pedals on there to keep the left right in check. So ripping into the sprint here and managing to snag the green jersey. There wasn't many people on at the time. And then here into the standard over and unders. You can see there the data which is unsmooth within Zwift for the workout mode. It's jumping around as expected, not too bad. Okay, over here to DC Rainmaker's analysis tool, my favorite website on the internet for diving down these rabbit holes. Diving in here to the 20 minute steady state, 200 watts and then up to 250. We've got a bit of a three layer cake action happening here. The Favero Asioma is reading 228 watts on average for that session there. Neo reading 223. Shimano power meter reading lower. Mm. Now, give or take a few watts here and there. Okay, I'm getting softer in my old age and being a little more accepting of power meters not being right. But an 11 watt difference between the known good Vero Asioma duos, which have been very good, and the Shimano, which was the new kid on the block in the Llama Lab here, needed a little bit more diving into. But first, one thing I did note, the Vero Asioma is reported 50-50, left-right balance. The Shimano Power Meter reported 53-47. That was a well, well, worlds away of uh, the 50-50. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on there until we had a look at the left right power. Now, there's something that stands out a lot right there. And uh, this is not my first rodeo when it comes to left right power meter problems this week. So looking at the data we're seeing here, you can see one source of power meter because left right power meters are two independent power meters, two separate channels, and we can get those here, which is a really cool thing of diagnosing what's going on. 
it appears the right side of the Shimano power meter is reading low. Now, the first thing I do when I'm critical of my testing methodology, I look at what I'm up to, what have I broken, how am I wrong, but this is why I also use multiple power meters. So the Favero Asiomas recording the exact same pedal strokes as the Shimano power meter, but the Shimano power meter choosing to report something else other than what the Favero Asiomas were reporting. Mm, is the answer there. Um, and as such, we're seeing an overall average power being a little lower. So parking those observations off to the side for now, let's look at the sprint responsiveness. So responsiveness isn't too bad as we saw from the Zwift replay and the side-by-side -side comparison of the data, not too bad. Um, it sort of tracks along matching with the Neo. The Favero ACM is a little higher in the sprint. Looking at the left-right power though, you can see here the right side power meter on the Shimano cranks is reading a little lower and lower than the right side on the Asioma pedals. Hmm, so let's park that one right next to our other observations and then into the over and unders and just riding along. Look, if you've got a uh, microscope, you can kind of see separation here, 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 and here's getting a bit ugly. And then just riding along, just riding along, there's a little bit of lag or something is just reading a little under. Surprise, surprise, it's the Shimano power meter. Reading a little under compared to the Neo and the Favero Asiomas. And no surprises why that's occurring. The right side power meter is always reading well under during those sections there. You can see through here, we're having the Neo, the left Asioma, the right Asioma all agree, and the left Shimano agree, but number five over here is uh, coming up a little short, as you can see through here. So let's park those three off to the side here and look at the outside ride data. Dun, 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 same deal. It's the uh, right-hand side letting us down. Here's a little section here around the lake where I was chasing a car, doing a little bit of motor pacing here. So we're putting out around 400, 450 watts there, stepping up, jumping on the back of the car there. And uh, as we can see, the Shimano's reading low. We scroll down to see what's going on with the left-right power readings between the Asioma Duos and the Shimano power meter. You can see there, there's three power meters, independent power meters, agreeing on being in the ballpark but there's one just doing its own thing, a little bit lower. It's the right side of the Shimano power meter. And as such, the overall, it's reading a little low. Into some more steady states and a small sprint there at the end. And look, this scaling there's a little different, but you can see it's still reading quite low there. And the overall power for just that little section, uh, 241 the Favero Asiomas and 230 on the Shimano units. Hmm. This isn't the first time this week I've had issues with left-right power meters and having to compare them. And again, it's not my first rodeo with this. If I could remove myself from the picture with this power meter, I would, as I did with the Vector 3 pedals, and use the static weight calibration to independently confirm the left-right was in balance. We're unable to do this with the Shimano power meter, so I'm gonna to have to take the word for it from the Asiomas and the numbers coming out of the Neo that something was up with that right side. Now, deep diving into this and looking at Ray's review, Ray's discussions, and a number of discussions and a number of other reviews, People have seen this. This is not uncharted territory for the Shimano power meter. There is issues with left-right balance and also the left-right readings of this contributing to a lower overall score. Now, it's not as easy as left plus right plus balance. There's a lot more to it. I'll link below to Ray's article on that where he discusses this in depth, but I'll just leave my comments for what I've observed here. Something's up, it's wonky, and really, it looks like a work in progress from Shimano to me rather than a full production unit. So after dropping that, it's not quite ready yet bombshell. On this unit, let's wrap it up with a few more observations. First of all, it's a nice looking unit. I do like the Dura stuff. The data was clean, the cadence was good. So as expected in 2018, the fact I'm talking about a premium priced Ant Plus only power meter in 2018 is a bit of a problem for me. And all the advertising and sites that sell these power meters listing this as Bluetooth compatible is misleading. If someone was to buy this unit at a premium price point and expect it to work with Bluetooth, they're gonna be very, very disappointed. That should be resolved. The left-right issues, um, as I said before, this is not uncharted territory for this. It needs to be addressed for this to be a contender. So my takeaway from a few hours hands-on with this unit and doing my research online is that even the industry leaders can have trouble getting a power meter to read accurately and reliably. What they shouldn't have trouble with is supporting protocols that we expect to have in our power meters in 2018. I'm keen to get my hands on the stages left-right and the 4i left-right, which is a very similar system to this. And we'll put that to the sword as well and see how it comes out. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll be back soon with more.